Hello, everyone. I am Taryn, and I'm hailing from the uh, from Los Angeles to tell you the story of a shitty, sunken Swedish ship. It is the 10th of August, 1628, and I'm a crewman aboard the Vasa, an immaculately decorated and devastatingly armed warship of His Majesty, the King Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden. The day is calm, sunny, with a light breeze from the southeast, and a short time ago, the captain made the order to depart on her maiden voyage to the naval station at Aldsnaven. Truly, the conditions could not be better. So we open the gun ports to fire a salute as we depart Stockholm. Ideal conditions save for our present immobile and significantly less strategic position, resting in mud 32 meters beneath the surface of the Swedish Sea. We've sailed only 1,300 meters and seen not a bit of conflict, and we've sunk. So one might ask, where did it all go wrong? Well, vanity. The end. Okay, that deserves some explanation. So let's go back to the early part of the 17th century. Sweden is undergoing a bit of a reformation as it grows from being a poor, sparsely populated, Christianized, boring, and decidedly not Viking nation of little influence to a bona fide empire and one of the major powers in Europe. All this largely due to a series of successful monarchs aiding in the establishment of a central government and significantly more exciting, the state's use of all available resources in the country to militarize and wage war. Decidedly more Viking. So now I'm King Gustavus, chilling out, doing a war in Poland, which I started because it's better to be Viking, anxiously pontificating the 30 years war raging in Germany and thinking things would be going a lot better if my navy wasn't in the shit. See, the Poles had recently captured one of my ships, the Tiger, and another of my crews just blew up the fucking sun which incidentally was the name of another of my ships the Poles nearly captured before being unceremoniously decimated by her own crew in what must have been a spectacular maritime supernova. Cool, two of my favorite ships lost, no big deal, except a storm as furious as the gas from Odin's ass just wiped out another 10 ships in the Bay of Riga. So, I get my favorite shipbuilder, Master Henrik on the horn. Oi, Henrik! I need two medium-sized ships, uh, large mid and one side of victory. Nay. Uh, what nay? I am your king. You cannot nay your king. Yeah, well, I already cut the timber. Uh, you can have one big one and uh, one really large ship. Yep. Fine, okay, large is good. Uh, you've made large ships before, yep. Yeah? Yo. Well, then Henrik died. <laughs> but that won't be a problem. A big ship sounds like fun, so I order a successor to nearly double the amount of guns initially fitted for the gun deck. Never mind the eggheads. We don't need to add another gun deck. Just jam them in there. All 80 fucking tons of them. This will be the most powerful ship of my era. This will be fine, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. You know what? More sculptures, hundreds of them. I want mermaids, monsters, Roman emperors, David, Gideon, some real Old Testament shit. Oh, and a three meter lion. How many we got so far? Over 700? Great. Put a couple thousand pounds of gunpowder in there too. Well, fuck me, it sank. Less than a half hour into its maiden voyage, it sank beneath the waves. In full view of thousands, only 120 meters from shore, taking with her the souls of 30 sailors. Blood eagle for the man responsible. Actually, no one was ever punished. But what the hell happened? Apparently, that's an age-old debate, but many say it was not the guns. A ship that size should be able to support that kind of weight gain better than a foppish man stuck in a pandemic. <laughs> not the sculptures either. Accessories make the outfit. But some, some argue the ship's construction itself. Neither Henrik nor his successor had ever built a ship of that size. Gustav didn't check his LinkedIn, so he was in possession of a ship that bore her nethers to the world. To put it simply, all the bits above water were too tall, too high, too everything. She was top heavy. One small gust of wind and uh, filled her sails and she heeled suddenly to port. The crew spooked cast off the sheets to allow sails to move unsecured. The ship righted itself, but another stronger gust heeled the ship back onto its port side, this time far enough to push open the lower gun ports, now submerged, allowing water to pour in. With the decks full of water, 
the Vasa sank faster than my stomach after reading the headlines every morning since 2016. The selection of culprits all clearly pointed to a lapse in communication. All, <laughs> a number of authorities were apparently aware but lacked the political fortitude to pass on any troublesome news of the ship's flawed designs. So famous is this kerfuffle that the business and engineering world adopted her name coining Vasa syndrome as a way to describe a breakdown in communication resulting in, well, the Vasa. There she lay in the muddy depths for the next 333 years, despite, despite numerous attempts at her salvage. But the ghost of Gustav possesses Swedish heritage, so the people were dedicated to win her back. So in the spring of 1961, after tremendous effort and thousands of unanswered text messages, she resurfaced to the waiting arms of Stockholm. She now rests in perpetual restoration at the Vasa Museet, or as you may have guessed, the Vasa Museum, along with 15 or more of her crew. By all means, I have been there myself, and I implore you, it is worth the time and the expense. Travel to Stockholm, visit the Vasa Museum, step through the threshold, and pause. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. You must smell this ship. I raise my glass to all those who have lost their lives, both literal and figurative, to the failures of middle management. Skull!